Hi, this is Scott from Zingati. In this video, we will walk through the reporting capabilities of the Zingati dashboard and show you how to spot anomalies and performance issues in your virtual infrastructure. We suggest that you go through this process once you have at least a week's worth of data to work with, although you can certainly apply these techniques with just a couple days worth of data if you wish. We'll start with a quick review of the types of data that the dashboard collects. Here's a diagram of a generic virtual infrastructure. It's made up of physical hosts, virtual machines, data stores, and network infrastructure. Upon installation, the Zangati dashboard automatically develops an inventory of your virtual infrastructure. Based on the type of component, it monitors various parameters such as CPU utilization on a host or access latency in a data store. The dashboard then looks at the real and virtual interfaces and collects flow information based on the source and destination address and the port number. It's always good practice to review the elements tracked by the dashboard to ensure that relevant data is being captured. When you're looking at the Discover tab, click back and forth between the unmapped and mapped view to ensure you understand what's being tracked and what's not being tracked. The Zingati dashboard is capturing all of this infrastructure performance information in real time and displaying it in various dashboard views. In addition to displaying the data, it records the data so it can be accessed later through the dashboard reports. There are two general report formats. The first report format is a stacked area graph of parameter data for a set of infrastructure elements over a requested period of time. These types of reports are useful for identifying spikes of activity occurring at times that affect infrastructure performance. The second format is called a top-end report and it analyzes parameter data across a variety of elements over the specified period of time and then presents a sorted list of entities based on their analyzed values. These reports are useful for identifying infrastructure elements that have utilization or traffic flows out of line with similar elements. Although it's possible to generate reports for any infrastructure element, Zingati has developed a set of predefined reports that have proven useful in gaining insight into virtual infrastructures. The reports available depend on which of the Zingati products you're utilizing. If you want to access the Zingati general user interface, log in with the admin username. If you want to access the VI dashboard, you'll log in with the VI admin username. And if you're a user of the VDI dashboard, you'll log in with the VDI admin username. We'll show a table later of recommended reports and associated Zingati products. The first type of report we'll look at is called the overall report, and it's available from the Zingati general user interface. This report was developed by Zingati to give you a quick overview of your virtual infrastructure. The overall report covers such topics as application network bitrate, CPU and memory usage, overall data store latency and throughput, and VM-related performance metrics such as memory ballooning and CPU ready. The line graphs in the report show data that is aggregated across your entire infrastructure. The top end graphs identify top infrastructure elements or network flow types ranked highest in the different measurements. Since the overall report is available from the Zangati General User Interface, we go ahead and log in with the admin username. We navigate to the Reports tab, select the overall report type. Although the overall report has a default configuration, we'll go ahead and add some additional elements to the report. We add all of the content slash reports. We add all of the statistics related to those reports and we add all of the top end reports. We select a period of one week to get a good view of the daily trends while still having a manageable time frame to work with. We then click view to generate the reports. Report generation can take two to five minutes. You can click on the save button in the upper right hand side of the screen to save the reports for later analysis. Now that we've generated a report, let's look at how to start extracting useful data. Here's the first graph in the overall report titled Application Network Bitrate. The horizontal axis represents the one week that we specified as the time period when we ran the report. The positive y-axis represents the bandwidth out in megabits per second. The negative y-axis represents the incoming bandwidth. In this particular graph, the measurements are the aggregate values across the infrastructure monitored by the dashboard, and therefore the in and out measurements will mirror for flows that both originate and terminate in the monitored infrastructure. Our primary tool for interacting with the stacked area graph in the Zangati report 
is hovering the cursor over areas of interest in the graph. Although the legend allows us to map colors in the graph to particular applications flows, hovering over an area of interest provides hover text with the exact date and time of the measurement, as well as the application type. If you make a note of the date, time, and type, you can then rerun the same report with a narrower time period, maybe an hour, to more closely examine the spike. As a side note, the green areas of the graph are interesting as they represent significant traffic associated with ports that aren't mapped to an application. We might consider identifying this traffic and mapping it to a port to make future reports more useful. Now let's look at a top end report. This report is labeled Top Data Stores by Data Store Latency. The top set of bar charts represents data stores that have the highest write latency. The bottom set of bar charts represents the data stores that have the highest read latency. If you want to explore a particular element in more detail, in this case a data store, you mouse over the name of the element, right click, and then select report. This automatically selects an appropriate report type, fills in the element name, and maintains the same time period. All you need to do is click view to run the new report. Now that we have some idea of the different types of data collected and the underlying reports we can generate, let's talk about a methodology for analyzing your virtual infrastructure. The Zangati performance troubleshooting methodology is based on two major ideas. The first is the truism that if utilization is greater than capacity, then there are going to be performance issues in your infrastructure. The second idea is that with a tool like the Zangati dashboard, you can look at both the utilization and the performance metrics of your infrastructure in real time and retrospectively, looking directly at the performance issues and uncovering the underlying causes. The methodology can be broken down into the following steps. The first thing we're going to do is cast a wide net. In order to cast a wide net, we start by running a variety of Zangati reports. The recommended reports and some specifics to look at are listed later in this video and on the Zangati website. Then we look for an interesting starting point. Once we have our report data, we go back to the first ideas driving the methodology and sort through the reports looking for indications of utilization issues or measured performance issues. Our starting point may be an interesting spike in network traffic, or it may be an outrageously bad CPU ready or data store latency issue. Then we evaluate the trouble factor. Large amounts of backup data on the network in the middle of the night may not be a cause for concern, but the same backup traffic during the day might be causing performance issues. The next thing we do is follow the hierarchy and the flows. Virtual infrastructures are natively built around several layers of hierarchy. VMs run on hosts, VMs are grouped, and storage is virtualized. The first step in figuring out why a host is driving data store traffic, for example, may be in figuring out which VM is running on that host and is driving the traffic. In addition to being hierarchical, virtualized environments are highly distributed with compute and data storage offered separated by data or storage networks. Understanding the flows of data between the elements is a key to understanding the behavior. And then if finally we identify the root cause element behavior. Once the hierarchy and flows are mapped out, it's likely that you can identify the root cause behavior that's producing the interesting starting point. Depending on the cause, the solution may involve load balancing, changing configuration parameters, or other adjustments. It may be that the underlying issue doesn't require fixing now, but points to the need to add infrastructure ahead of future growth. There are some reports that identify performance issues directly without in-depth investigation. These memory-related graphs from the overall report indicate that top VMs are memory-starved, likely leading to poor performance. Here the data store IOPS top end graph from the overall report shows that one of 10 data stores has about 10x the use rate of the other data stores. This would point to a potential load balancing opportunity. Here's a graph from a report on just the network bitrate for one specific application. By utilizing the hover text feature, we've identified that these large spikes of backup traffic are happening during the day. Now let's look at some examples applying a couple levels of analysis. The first thing we're going to do is run the overall report for a two week period of time. As we've seen, the first chart in the overall report is an application network bitrate report. 
In this particular run of the report, we see that net bias traffic makes up a significant amount of the overall network traffic. NetBIOS is a legacy protocol utilized in some specific desktop applications, so you wouldn't expect it to drive significant traffic. The top applications by average network bitrate chart confirms that the NetBIOS traffic makes up a significant and unexpectedly large portion of our overall application network bitrate. To figure out where the traffic's coming from, we run an application report where we specify that the report only include the NetBIOS application traffic. We verify we have run the right report by confirming that this traffic is the same traffic that we identified in the overall report. The final clue to the puzzle comes later in the application report where we see that the identity count for the net bias traffic peaks at over 1,000. This is not a huge amount of traffic between a couple of machines, but is a net bias storm between most of the PC entities in the infrastructure. A check of the default net bias settings in the desktops may reveal a configuration setting that is causing this traffic. Many of our customers have utilized the Zangati dashboard reporting facilities to diagnose periodic application performance issues, which in turn have been caused by data store latency issues. The underlying cause of data store latency usually goes back to the first principle of demand exceeding capacity. But given the shared nature of data store resource and the bursty nature of applications, data store latency issues can be hard to diagnose. Here's an example of the Zangati methodology applied to one of these issues, taking special advantage of the fact that the Zangati dashboard captures and stores all relevant infrastructure data, allowing time-based event correlation to be a powerful debugging tool. Here we see an application network bitrate graph from an overall report. The time frame has been narrowed down to a particular hour to explore several spikes in traffic. These high traffic timeframes are ripe for looking for issues as they represent bursty events, which might illuminate underlying infrastructure issues. Sure enough, if we look at the average data store latency from the overall report for this one hour time period, we see excessive data store latency across the ESX groups. In terms of severity, these measurements of 400 plus milliseconds for read latency and 300 plus milliseconds for write latency certainly can cause performance issues. In order to dig out the hierarchy and flows related to the latency, we dig in by running additional reports. Here is the data store latency graph from the data store report on the particular data store of interest for the same one hour time frame as the overall report. It's important to note the scale on the graph and to utilize the hover text feature to understand the write latency is on the order of three seconds and the read latency is on the order of 11 seconds. These are serious departures from any sensible latency numbers and need to be understood and corrected. The next step is to dig into the suspect application network traffic by running an application specific report. Here's the network bitrate data just for this specific application type. We now line up the two graphs to look for time correlation and see that the onset of the latency events is correlated with a ramp in suspect traffic. We then go back and look at the overall traffic graph to make sure that there isn't other traffic that correlates as well. It's interesting to note that similar levels of this traffic don't cause significant latency issues at other times, and it's only through having a tool like the Zangati dashboard that records all of the data that we have the opportunity to find this correlation. At this point, we just need to figure out the source of the traffic. Since the suspect traffic is a vast majority of the traffic during this time period, we simply go to the top identities by average network bitrate chart to figure out which VM or host is the source of the traffic. At this point, we'll go through all the different reports that the Zangati Professional Services team runs when working with the customer to evaluate their virtual infrastructure. We start out um, with the overall report, and that gets access through the general dashboard. And then three reports that are available either on the virtual infrastructure or the VDI dashboard. That's the host summary report that we've talked a lot about. Either a virtual machine summary uh, for one week or a desktop summary for one week, a data store summary for one week, an application histogram for the desktop protocol if you have a virtual desktop infrastructure, and then look again at the uh, general dashboard to run an events report to understand if there's any events that you should follow up on. And here's some of the things to look for. Certainly storage latency spikes over 50 milliseconds and be sure to flag those if they're during the business day. Bandwidth outliers, flag if again if they're during the business day and run an application report on the top protocols.
to understand the source and sync of the data and, and if these make sense. Evaluate the average and max values for the IOPS for the different data stores. Does it match the design? And certainly for memory and CPU use across the hosts and the VMs. And then drill into the top end list for the VM desktops. See if you understand the applications and the, uh, the load balancing opportunities as you look at the utilization of uh, the VMs and the desktops. You certainly also want to look at the top consumers of CPU and memory and data store. Really look at, uh, do these make sense? Is there an opportunity for load balancing? And then there's dashboard features that allow you to review the alert um, and the events and uh, in the recordings. Uh, so use that tab in the dashboard to really explore those. And then if you see alerts and events, uh, you may want to set up recordings for any items that deserve future study. We're confident that the consistent use of the Zingati dashboard reporting capabilities will help you keep your virtual infrastructure efficiently and effectively meeting the needs of your users. Thanks very much for taking the time to utilize the Zingati dashboard and to review this video. Please visit our website for additional customer resources.